important to have testimony. We've just thank the Lord for these testimonies of healing that we've been receiving even quite recently. And there's a young man in this moment who's going to give us a, a bit of a testimony, and that's Paolo. And Paolo's going to come up with his dad. Jason looks after our website and all our uh, filming here. So, are you going to mic up? Hello. Oh. Is John? Maybe his daddy will come up and help. Can we make Paolo feel welcome? I'm going to let your daddy do all the tech stuff here. Yeah. It's on. Okay. okay. Um, lately, for Let's a long... Let's just use this. I've had long COVID for a very long time, nine months, and I have been off school for five months. Uh, just recently, I've been back to school, and the prayers of this community has helped me a lot and helped my family. My mother has had long COVID for two years now and she's slowly improving and I know a couple of people in this church have been praying for her and I thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks very much Fergus. Thanks for inviting me to speak here in this last service before we take our summer break. And can I just say that that'll maybe be a disappointment to some people. You like coming here, naturally, on a Thursday evening. But I just felt the Lord say to me there, as I was sitting waiting to come up, tell the people that if they can't get prayer ministry here on a Thursday night, they can still pray for themselves. That's very important. Yeah, Ken and Jim Glennon used to say that the only reason for receiving prayer in the laying on of hands is that so eventually, we'll actually be able to pray for healing for ourselves. So you have a couple of months now to be able to practice that. Um, I think we've already heard a good preacher here. I'd just like to congratulate Paolo. You spoke very well, son. You know, when I was your age, I couldn't have got up and done that. But you spoke well. Well done now. And, um, could we just have a prayer, please, just before I speak? I know we've welcomed the Spirit a time or two to come here both in word and in song, but could we just be quiet for a moment before I speak? We we'll want to give the Lord an opportunity just to take over these words and speak personally to each one of us. So let's invite him now, quietly, just to breathe the life of his Spirit into the words I'm going to speak and also into me. Let's welcome the Spirit to come, please. Lord, it's hard to break that great sense of peace. I think it's just a confirmation from you, Lord, that you're present, that you're hearing our prayer, you're responding, you're touching these words and making them your own. And you have a personal word for each one of us here this evening. That's a marvelous thing, Lord. You present with us, speaking a personal word to each one of us. That's fantastic. We thank you for that. In Jesus' name. Amen. I'm just going to take one of the classic passages in the ministry of divine healing, James chapter 5, beginning at verse 13. Is any one of you in trouble? He should pray. Is anyone happy? Let him sing songs of praise. Is any one of you sick? He should call the elders of the church to pray over him and anoint him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer offered in faith will make the sick person well. The Lord will raise him up. If he has sinned, he will be forgiven. Therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. 
You know, I just came to the realisation inside the last day or two that I've been involved in the ministry of divine healing for almost exactly 50 years. I think it was around about the month of May or June 1972 that I first went to a healing service in St. Anne's Cathedral. Up until then, I knew nothing about the ministry of divine healing. It was one of the best kept secrets in the church. Thank God, you know, word is out about it all over the place now. But during those 50 years, I've seen some remarkable things happen. And I think one of the most remarkable was whenever a rector in East Belfast rang me one day, told me about one of his parishioners, a young woman called Louise, who had gone blind seven years before when she was giving birth to twins. He wanted to know, would I go and pray with her? His discernment was that this blindness was not meant to be unto death, and I took seriously the gift of discernment that he had. But he also discerned that I was the person who was meant to pray with her. So I felt it was right for me to do it. So I went along, had a conversation with the girl. We talked a long time. She didn't know very much about the ministry of divine healing, but she wanted to get well. That was important. So I tried to explain to her the best I could what the ministry of divine healing involved. And then I left. And a few days later, I came back again. Now, this was a big day. This was going to be the day of prayer. But done our talk on the few days before. But this was actually the time for prayer. And we moved into prayer very quickly. Probably prayed for about 50 minutes, 15 minutes, sorry. I thought it was a powerful prayer. But whenever I left the house, she was still blind. But next morning, I was sitting having breakfast, having a cup of coffee. The phone rang. It was the rector. Davy, brilliant news. Louise woke up this morning and she can see. And he thought it was a miracle. And I thought it was a miracle. And you can bet your boots when I went to see Louise. She thought that it was a miracle as well. Now, I've seen remarkable things like that happen. But... The kind of fellow that I am, whenever you get a miracle like that, I sat back and I thought, what caused that miracle? You see, I prayed for people who were blind before and they didn't get their sight back. What was different on this occasion? I felt that there were four factors that were important in Louise's healing. First of all, the discernment of the rector. He felt that God was speaking to him that this blindness was not meant to be unto death and that I was the person who was supposed to pray for her. Secondly, I had organized a huge number of people to pray in the background, and that always gives an extra power whenever you're praying with somebody. Thirdly, Louise really wanted it. She was hungry. She had four children. Of course she wanted to get her sight back, but she was really hungry, and she was hungry for what God could offer her through the prayer that I was offering. And then there was an important one as well, at long last, I had put right something that the Lord had been telling me for some time to put right. And I felt that it just opened something up so that whenever I prayed with Louise, I just got a real freedom and God was able to work a miracle. You know, I could tell you many stories actually like that. There's a lot of people sitting in front of me here this evening who through divine healing ministries have received a miracle almost as good as that one there. Like Paul Burns, for instance, walked out of a wheelchair after we had been praying with him for about three years. But while those individual miracles were happening from time to time, healing was going on at many different levels. And let me just tell you some of the levels of healing that people have received, especially if they didn't receive maybe the full healing that they were looking for. Partial, but not complete healing. Life lengthened many years beyond what the medical people anticipated. A doctor telling me when a, a woman in his practice whom we prayed for was healed from cancer told me that the healing that took place was not by medical means. That was an honest statement by that doctor. Medical treatment and spiritual treatment going hand in hand, brothers and sisters, a very powerful combination. People receiving great spiritual strengthening, but not full physical healing. The relationship with Jesus 
completely transformed. I could give you many more levels of healing, but I haven't time to do it here this evening. But could I just say to you, if you have not been fully healed yet, you've been coming to get prayer, not fully healed, what advice would I give to you here this evening? Keep on, keep on praying. And keep on praying the prayer of faith, believing that God is answering. I believe it's very important at a certain stage when we're praying to move from asking to trusting that God has heard us and then praising him that he's answering those prayers. Keep on receiving prayer and the laying on of hands. Keep on asking people to pray in the background and keep hope alive. Hope in God and a great God, almighty God. And don't give up. Don't give up. You know, one of the things that makes us different in the ministry of healing is the laying on of hands. It's, a, it's just a very beautiful form of prayer. I first received it, as I said, 50 years ago in the Chapel of the Holy Spirit in St. Anne's Cathedral, that little chapel. As you go in there on the left-hand side, it was a very moving experience. Um, I had taken a herbal medicine which had a very bad effect upon me. But the problem was that whenever I stopped taking it, the bad effects didn't stop. And the medical people didn't seem to be able to do an awful lot to help me at that time. I was fortunate that I was working with the Reverend Cecil Kerr, one of the great men produced by the church in Ireland in the 20th century. And Cecil was already involved in the Ministry of Divine Healing, and he was taking the service one Friday at lunchtime in St. Anne's Cathedral, and he invited me to go down. And whenever I had the opportunity, there wasn't a very big crowd there to go and kneel at the communion rail. Cecil made it easy for us on that occasion. He said, you don't need to say what it is you want prayer for. God knows. So you don't, you don't need to say. And he laid his hands on my head. And I could feel the peace of God and the power of God just starting to flow right through me. It was a wonderful experience. It reminded me very much of another experience that I had like that. When, as a teenager in Downpatrick, I was confirmed in the parish church by the then Bishop of Down and Remoor, Frederick Julian Mitchell. And I went forward and I knelt down, a 15-year-old boy. He laid his hands on my head and prayed a prayer that began with the words, Defend, O Lord, this thy servant with thy Holy Spirit. Even for a young teenager, that was a very moving moment. And going forward to receive prayer and the laying on of hands, was exactly the same. I pray that you'll find it a moving moment as you come to receive prayer over here this evening. You know, in the services that I have come to recently, while ministry is going on there, it's a very beautiful experience just to look over and to observe and to see the healing power of God flowing into people, just in an atmosphere of peace. You know, there have been many other occasions when this ministry has meant an awful lot to me. Um, I could give you many, many examples, but one in particular that stands out. The 15th of August, 1994, I was asked to speak at a special service in St. Agnes's Church in Andersonstown. It was just two weeks before the IRA ceasefire. A lot of people were going to church in those days, and there were 400 members of the congregation that evening. But just in the course of the day, I wanted to do well. I hadn't preached in the Catholic Church all that often before that. Wanted to do well. I was with praying people a number of times during the course of that day. And on three occasions, I asked them to pray with me with the laying on of hands. You see, whenever I got up that evening, because of the preparation that I'd had through the prayers of other people, I was on fire. I was as free as a bird. And I remember... Whenever I closed the sermon and finished and was just about to walk away, 400 people spontaneously burst into applause. They, they, they acknowledged, they, they could see that the anointing of the Holy Spirit was upon me. And why did I get it? Because three times in one day, I had received prayer and the laying on of hands. There was another occasion, actually, where it was very, very important to me as well. 2005... I had a hernia operation in St. Luke's Hospital for the Clergy in London. I stayed there for 10 days, not in the hospital, but with the Society of St. Francis. And then I had to make my way back 
uh, back to Belfast again. I've been doing great up until then, starting to walk really good distances and free from pain and all that sort of thing. But I had to carry a bag through London and I had nobody to do it for me. And for a man in health, that would have been no problem. But for a man who had had an abdominal operation just a few days before, it was a big problem. And I knew when I got back and woke up in Belfast the next morning that I damaged myself. I hope I hadn't done any, any serious damage. But anyway, I decided I would get prayer. And for the next five weeks, every day, wherever I was, if I came across people who were praying people, I got them to pray with me with the laying on of hands. And at the end of the day, the operation was a complete success. But I was glad, I was glad that that ministry was available. And I'm glad that you have come this evening to take advantage of it. I might be given a bit of extra work for the team, but I'm saying to you here this evening, don't miss the opportunity to go over and receive prayer just before you leave this evening. Prayer and the laying on of hands is a great source of God's power. And you know what we do when we pray with the laying on of hands is a very simple thing. We simply bring you to Jesus and ask him to heal you. And I remember a lady who was involved in the ministry of healing long before I even heard of it. She said, we believe that when we pray with the laying on of hands, the power of God is released. The power of God is released, but always in a gentle way. Doesn't knock us about, doesn't disturb us, but only does great good. Can I just say a word to the team here this evening? Allow God to do the healing. Don't put, don't put too much of yourself into it. Don't pray out loud all the time. Be quiet sometimes and give the Lord a chance to respond. Don't pray out loud all the time. Be quiet for part of the time. Give the Lord a chance to respond. If any of you are sick, send for the elders of the church to pray over you and to anoint you with oil. And if you do that, you'll be made well. For the prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. And just a final point, actually. Learn to listen to God. You know, the, the Lord gave that gift to me in a fresh way, way back in 1982. That's 40 years ago. Um, and it has been, I would say, if not the greatest gift he has ever given me, certainly one of the greatest gifts because when we can listen to the Lord and we're worried about things, then we can receive reassurance from him. Uh, and we can receive guidance as to what he wants us to do. There's a famous South African minister, Andrew Murray, who wrote that wonderful book, Absolute Surrender. Andrew said he's dead 100 years, incidentally, but his message, praise God, lives on. Uh, he said, what God says to us in prayer, far more important than what we say to God. Now, there was one particular time where I was really glad that God had given me that gift. I woke up in the morning and I discovered as I was getting dressed after I'd washed that there was a lot of blood on the front of my pajamas. Now, I'm not a medical expert, but that was a bit alarming for me. So I got dressed as quickly as possible, got downstairs, got into my time of prayer and made myself a cup of coffee. And I decided that instead of talking, I would listen. I needed to hear a word from the Lord because I was worried about this. There was no question about it. And um, immediately he said to me, David, don't you be worrying about this. I have this situation completely under control. Uh, don't let your mind work over time here. This is not what you're thinking it is. I was very fortunate, actually, that I got an appointment, a cancellation with the doctor at 11 o'clock that morning. And I was glad to see a, a man whose judgment I trusted, incidentally. I was glad to see that he wasn't as worried about it as I was. But he was able to get me an appointment in White Abbey Hospital. And they did an internal test there. And the, the surgeon was watching it up on a, on a big screen. Oh, uh, eventually he said, look, there it is there. The prostate had enlarged and had burst blood vessels. And it was just a natural thing, actually. And there was nothing to worry about. But what gave me peace at that time 
being able to listen to the Lord and the Lord able to reassure me that there was nothing to worry about. Um, Last year, I think as many of you know, had a hip operation and while healing has gone well, uh, it has probably taken longer than what any of us really anticipated that it would be. But there were many times during the course of the last year when the Lord gave me reassurance, even when I wasn't asking for it. One time, whenever he seemed to speak to me, whenever I get up in the morning, I usually sit on the edge of the bed for a couple of minutes just to get myself composed before I move on, really, to start the day. Many times he has said to me, David, you're going to make a full recovery from this operation. I'll tell you something, brothers and sisters. You know, I hold on to those words. David Packy Hamilton told me I ought to meditate on those words. And he's absolutely right because that is a word from the Lord. And the Lord has never failed to keep a promise that he has given to me yet. There was another occasion I was sitting on the edge of the bed. And he said to me, David, I'm making a new man of you in body, mind and spirit. And I'm going to tell you something, brothers and sisters. I think that's what exactly what he's doing. He could have rushed this healing through if he had wanted to. Quite capable of doing that. But I think he's working in my mind. And he's certainly working in my spirit. In my relationship with him. But then the greatest one of all. Sitting there one day. Wasn't even looking for a word from him. And suddenly it just came into my mind as clear as a bell. You know how sometimes you get a word and you just know it's directly from the Lord. David, you're going to spend eternity with me in heaven. I said, wow, it doesn't get any better than that, Lord. It doesn't get any better than that. And I'll tell you this much, not only do I meditate on it, but I'm really holding on to that. Up until then, I knew in my mind where I was going. No question about it. But I didn't know emotionally how I would respond if I was faced with that imminent prospect. But now in my emotions, I have no doubt where I'm going because I was able to listen and the Lord gave me that word. Now it may well be some people are sitting there saying, uh, you know, I'm not very good at listening and hearing the Lord speak. Well, look, uh, if you're not good at all or if you're just a wee bit good or if you're very good, I would say, I've got a word for you. The words of Jesus himself. Ask and you will receive. Ask and you will receive. He wants to speak to you. You know, almost every page of the Bible, it takes it for granted that God can speak to his people in a way that his people can hear and understand. The Lord wants to speak to us. He has wonderful things, actually, to say to us. The problem is always on our side, not being able to hear so well. So I think all of us need to ask him to develop that and deepen that gift within us that we can hear clearly. And then he'll be able to say to all of us things like what he has said to me over the past year, which I'll tell you this much, it has made a big difference to how I handled the past year. Uh, No doubt about it. Now, Fergus has already mentioned that there's a wee booklet. Actually, it's a very nice booklet. George Hewitt uh, has got this booklet done. George, unfortunately, has been ill this evening, so he can't can't come to the service, but he has done this booklet. There's one for everybody. Ten things to do spiritually when we're sick. I hope that you'll get a copy of that before you leave, because it's only about three or four pages, but there's a fair bit of wisdom, actually, uh, in that book. And let me just finish off by giving you a definition of divine healing that was written by a man called Andrew McComb, a Presbyterian minister, one of the pioneers of the healing ministry in the church in Ireland. Divine healing is an endeavour through prayer, counselling, the laying on of hands and anointing with oil to bring to someone in need of wholeness the healing love of the living Christ. You know, I think that's worth repeating. I'm going to give it to you again to finish with here. Divine healing is an endeavour through prayer, counselling, the laying on of hands and anointing with oil to bring to someone in need of wholeness the healing love of the living Christ. Now Fergus has asked me just to lead you in prayer this evening, so I think we'll be quiet for a moment. We asked the Lord to speak to us at the beginning through the words that I would speak. 
my words by themselves, they wouldn't be very good to anybody. But anointed by the power of God, he can bring a blessing. So let's just be quiet and reflect on what we've heard this evening. I'm going to give you some silence to pray for somebody whom you're concerned about. A little bit of silence to tell the Lord where you would like him to touch you. And then we're going to pray God's blessing on one another. You know, there's a good number here this evening. This could be very powerful. So I'm going to get you, first of all, just to pray for a person or some people whom you wish to bring before the Lord this evening. I'll give you about half a minute or a minute of silence. And another minute of silence just to tell the Lord where you would like him to touch you personally this evening. And now we're going to pray God's blessing on one another. Just as we remain in an attitude of prayer, I'd like everybody now, just within ourselves, just to pray. Everybody here, in the name of Jesus, I bless you. Everybody here, in the name of Jesus, I bless you. Just pray that a number of times, please, on behalf of everybody else here. Just slightly different this time. Everybody here, in the name of Jesus, I bless you with the peace of God. In the name of Jesus, I bless you with the peace of God. Just slightly different again. Everybody here, in the name of Jesus, I bless you with the healing of God. In the name of Jesus, I bless you with the healing of God. Just pray that now, please. And now we gather up all those prayers for all those people as we say, may the healing and the strengthening mercies of the risen Lord Jesus Christ, who is present with us here, now at this very moment and in the days to come, enter powerfully into each one of you, into your souls, into your minds, into your bodies. Heal you of anything that may harm you and give you God's peace. Amen. Hey guys, if you've enjoyed this video, then please click the thumbs up button to give us a like. This will ensure that we reach more people. And also don't forget to click on the subscribe button to make sure that you don't miss out on any of our new videos. Thank you very much and take care.